I first heard the name of Sidney Cotton here in England, where he's certainly much better known than in his native Queensland. When you think about Australian aviation pioneers, you think of men with names like Charles Kingsford Smith, Bert Hinkler, Harry Hawker, but Sidney who? Sidney Cotton was the debonair businessman who was turned into a spy by British intelligence. He made a great many friends in this country, but also some powerful enemies. In fact, when I first mentioned his name in the hallowed halls of the Royal Aeronautical Society, there was a sharp inrush of breath. Oh yes, they said, he caused a great deal of trouble over here, you know. This home movie shows Cotton in his 70s. Pictures of Sidney Cotton are rare. He's usually behind the camera rather than in front of it. His work in England brought him fame and fortune, but he went virtually unrecognised in his native Australia. He was an extraordinary man. Flying open cockpit biplanes was cold and unpleasant, so in 1914, Sidney Cotton invented a new sort of flying suit, called somewhat predictably the Sidcot. It was made of waterproof linen with a lining of airproof silk, and a fur collar and it became standard issue for pilots not just in World War I but right through to the end of World War II. In fact even Captain Manfred von Richthofen, the famous Red Baron, was wearing one when he was shot down. Hi, the Sydney Cotton story is certainly an interesting one so if you're enjoying what we've got here in this trailer jump on over to our streaming platform at Historical Machines TV that's www.historicalmachines.tv where you can sign up for a free seven day trial Check out what's on our catalogue and watch the full version of this great movie from Jeff Watson. Both Britain and France were keen to find out the extent of the German arms build-up. They needed some pictures taken from the air. Winterbottom said he would provide the plane if Cotton would be the pilot. The aircraft that Cotton chose was a twin-engine Lockheed Electra which could fly fast and high. The first spy flights were to be a collaborative venture between the British Secret Intelligence Service, MI6, and the French spy network, the Deuxième Bureau. The RAF had been using low-flying Blenheim bombers to get its pictures, but the lenses frosted over and the pictures were useless. He designed these special adaptations where warm air was taken from the aircraft's engines and blown across the various important parts of the camera so that it didn't freeze up. And he got rid of the condensation problems by deflecting hot air streams across lenses, across optical flats, the windows where the camera's pointed through. So the quality of the imagery suddenly became from abysmal failure after failure into high quality images which could be interpreted and used with great skill. Join us on our full advert free streaming service at historicalmachines.tv where you'll find lots more great footage just like this, all for less than the cost of a cup of coffee per month.